Hey everybody, well, it's been a while, um, so uh, I've actually been saving up the days and have got four or five, six days worth of stuff here. Uh, it's, it's a lot of the same work that you're going to see me do, so it's not like uh, I've been saving up a whole bunch of different sections. I think all of this spans only two or three sections, I forget which, but uh, there is a lot to show, and so this is going to be about a 15 or so... 15 or 16 minute video and uh, yeah good times right now you can see I'm putting the uh, back deck on there and using the squeezer as best I can uh, if you have the three different yoke sizes you can actually use nothing but the squeezer which was really cool I think except for like one rivet uh, and it was just an awkward angle and so I ended up having to use the bucking bar on that one but other than that I used the squeezer across the entire back deck which was pretty cool. Uh, I like using the squeezer because it gives you a nice uniform uh, uniform squeeze, you know, uniform set rivet. Got really rainy. Uh, it's been raining on and off quite a bit here, so that's why I shut the hangar. And, and you'll see on the floor over there that it starts to pool a little bit. I've got a little bit of a leak under the seal. I need to, need to fix that, but no big deal. If I remember correctly, this is a 10-21 or something like that, and I'm... You see me there, I was putting on the frame, and now I'm doing the rest of the back deck stuff. Uh, easy, easy, easy. Nothing's hard. Again, uh, there come there will be some times later, and I'll, I'll talk to them where, uh, you know, I, get, I almost bruised and cut myself up trying to get my arms in places because things get a little tight down here at the end of the tail. But you can see right now, it's a little awkward sometimes. Like right there, I was, you know, I'm sticking my arm underneath trying to get my arm all the way in the back. Um, yeah, you know, what do you do? If, uh, if you have long arms, you'll be all right. If you have fat fingers, though, sometimes it can be a little troubling. If I have to give one piece of advice, uh, tooling wise, I would say do yourself a huge favor and go and buy a two, actually two three eighths ratchets and uh, a seven sixteenths ratchet as probably well as a half inch. Eh, you may not need the half inch, but definitely get the others it, there's so much uh so much using a bolt and the the ability to have the ra you know ratchets on either side of the bolt sort of like these these things will make your life a heck of a lot easier just trust me on this one i didn't actually have them during the entire course of this video and the whole time i was thinking god i wish i had these home depot has them for five bucks seriously so just yeah get them also, during the course of this video, I have a lot of shots like this where the camera is really far away. Sorry about that. I won't do that again. Uh, I, I was trying to give a, you know, an overall view as I wander back and forth around the various places in the uh, hangar. And what I really ended up doing is make it so you can't see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Whoops. So this is the beginning of 1023. And here I am starting putting the... Uh, the skin on this is this is the final riveting of the skin and uh you know riveting this this the top back skin there to the stiffeners and then slowly over the course of the of me doing this i will you know bend them down and and uh rivet it to the ribs which is very cool um took a long time and this is one of the places where i, I really had a hard time just because that back rib that you can see here, this kind of little window in the back, you'll need to stick your arm in there to get those rivets. I mean, this is actually a one-man job. You, you can do all of this, believe it or not. Um, but you just kind of have to really reach. If you have short arms, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to definitely need help. And that might require you putting this on a table or putting on the floor and have someone crawl inside and buck. I, you know, I'm not sure how to solve that. There have been a few times, and I'll talk about this more later, where, you know, the instructions are, you know, put a bolt here, or, you know, reach in and grab a screw or something like that. And you're like, how the heck do I get in there? And it's sometimes it's, I, you know, yeah, you have to have alien arms or something to be able to make it, you know, a tentacle or something to be able to make that reach. Uh, but for, as a general rule, so far, a lot of the holes make sense. You're like, okay, I'm glad there's a hole here because otherwise I wouldn't be able to reach it. Having said that, make sure you deburr everything. And I mean skins and ribs. 
I've cut myself a number of times where I just did not deburr enough. You know, I did not, uh, I was not careful enough when I went back and scrubbed everything or, or, you know, sanded it down and it got really sharp. And I actually got a really bad bruise where it was just, you know, pressing up against the sharp edge of the aluminum. And I'll talk to it when it happens. It caused a really, you know, dark bruise on my arm for several days uh, from that sharp edge. So there's going to be some sharp edge, but, you know, it shouldn't have been as bad as it was. So I would say uh, I probably did not deburr enough. And lesson learned, right? This is the area where things start to get interesting. I, I took some Clicos off there to try to see if, if I could, like, reach up underneath and do it or if I was going to need to reach in through that back window. And there's just no way. If Even if you take all the Clicos off, there's no way to, like, just pry up a little bit and get your arm in there. You have to go through this back window. And you see me reach in through that back window there to get it. And then I walk around the other side to see if what I did was good uh, and, and test it with the little tester. And here, here I'm really reaching in to get those. And this is where I start getting bruises on the inside of my arm because that little window, believe it or not, it looks like it's big, but it's not. Um, and it's it's scraping my arm on either side as I as I go in there. And this is where I start realizing, you know what, this shit's sharp. And so I start going back and deburring things and trying to make it a little smoother so I'm not cutting myself. I've bled all over this machine, I swear. Uh, you'll be able to do DNA on this plane and know it's mine. I don't know if that's funny or not. I thought I was going to need, you know, to get my wife to come out to help me with some, with some of these, but as it turns out, no. I was actually able to get all of them. Uh, the ones directly in the center, like the centermost one, which I think I will leave it for last, it was the hardest, but uh, I found if I... So for the most part, I, I was using the two-pound tung, uh, tungsten bucking bar, but for those last couple ones that are way far, I had to use the foot one, the, the foot footer bucking bar. And uh, yeah, it worked out really nicely, actually. I was surprised. I went back with the little uh, rivet checker and they were great. So no complaints at all. Everything worked out really well. Well, except for the bruising and the bleeding, I guess those are complaints. You see out there, the weather is still kind of miserable. It's just pouring the whole time I was out here. And then, like I said, this was over, over the course of days. We just had really craptacular weather for a while. And uh, here shortly, this is, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, now I'm doing the other side. And I will take the camera and I'll move it, like I said, to some place where I think it'll be great for you to see what I'm doing. And yeah, it's so far away, you can't see what I'm doing at all. But just know that I'm doing the same thing now on this side that I was doing on the other side. Uh, with the, the, you know, previously I had the added ability of being able to just check my rivets very easily by going to the other side, just looking because the skin was up. This time you kind of have to be more creative on your rivet checking, uh, but you definitely want to check them. And so I do, but sometimes I have to, uh, you know, lean in or get over and look, or I test them later when I put the whole thing on the floor, which uh, you'll see me do because there are a couple, couple pieces that you have to do after you put the skin on that you cannot in any other way do but to crawl in there. Um, yeah, I think I think it's the seat belt hooks or something. The I'm not sure what it is, but anyways, it's one of those things that you just got to get in there and do. See the sudden light change? That was another day that just went by. And I think that might be another day as well. There was one day I only came out. I was only out here for like 30 minutes or so. I try to do, you know, I'm still trying to do like an hour and a half a day, but back then I was anyway. So this is obviously another day. But uh, sometimes, you know, work being what it is, it can't. And I know I've gone a couple weeks since uh, I posted anything. And there was actually like a two-week period where I didn't do anything. Uh, mainly because I'm running out of things to do. I'm rapidly approaching the end. As I record this, I'm actually only 10 pages away from being completely done with the empennage. What you're seeing here is about 20 pages from being done. And right there where I'm reaching in really far, by the way, that's where I got the big nasty bruise on my right arm. Uh, it's weird. It didn't really hurt or anything. It was just one of those, I looked down at one point and I'm like, well, I got a big old bruise on my arm. And that was what it was. It was like a, a pinch bruise or, you know, like, like a, I just, I mashed it real hard against a sharp edge. It broke a blood vessel and yay, bruise. 
I've had a number of people out at the airport come out and check out the work. Uh, a lot of folks really happy to see me there and, and happy to help. Oh, here's what I'm talking about. See, I had to put that on the ground and crawl inside. In order to bolt the, this is the, the shoulder harness anchors. And while I'm in there, I'm also checking rivets. And you, I had the little rivet checker on the floor and I picked it up and, and I'm in there checking now. So right here, before I move on to section 11, I figured I'd go ahead and get the safety wire hooked up uh, for my elevators and trim. This is actually from a much, much earlier uh, section of the plans. Uh, I had just waited. I didn't actually have one of those safety wire pliers. Very handy, by the way, kind of a cool thing. You just, you, you pinch them tight and they, they grip and then you just pull it and it twists away. Pretty cool tool, makes your life easy. The end results look like this and a uh, little out of focus, but you can see that I've got it exactly safety wired in and got the safety wire tucked and all the hinge all bent in as it's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, did that on both sides. So once I got that done, it was the beginning of installing the rod end bearings into the horizontal stabilizer so that I can actually start hanging the elevators. Very cool. I had some binding uh, and I had to figure out how to correctly screw those bearings in and out. Those things suck, uh, but I had to screw them in and out until I figured out how to hang them correctly. And I'll let me from the past give you some clue as to what I was going through. So I'm at a pretty critical stage here where I'm going through and I'm getting the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer married up. One thing that I've got a problem with right now is there's binding between this piece and the horizontal stabilizer. You can hear it scratching. Inside here, there are two screws that are uh, joints, or like CD joints. My theory is, since there's angled binding here, if I take this one out a little and this one in a little, it should shift everything ever so slightly that way. So I'm going to give that a try. I fought with that for probably two and a half, three hours. Just little minute screwing it out, little minute screwing it in. And the biggest thing is, is taking the bolt out, or there's two bolts holding it in, taking those out and having to use pliers or something to get them back in there. It's really awkward and it took forever, uh, but I did finally get it uh, eventually. Okay, so after an incredible amount of fudging with it, um, we don't bind here anymore, but it's binding down here, just scraping. So I think I need to take this one out uh, one, if this one comes out one, this one has to come out one too. So I'm gonna try like one and two out out. This kind of sucks. It does. It really, really does. That scratching that you hear, it was actually uh, one of the rivets was scraping against uh, the f uh, rounded metal that, uh, you know, as you take the aluminum, you round it, and it was just kind of one of the rivets scraping. And when I'm talking about taking out, I'm just t turning, it's just a bolt, basically, that has this, like, CV joint, and I'm just turning it out one turn. But that means I have to take the whole thing apart, to just make one turn, and then put the whole thing back together. Oh, that didn't work. Take the whole thing apart one turn, to, oh, put it back together. It just takes forever. It really kind of sucked. All right, success. Smooth travel. Real binding to speak of, and it bounces. That's a uh, that's got to be a good sign. To give you some idea, here this part of the video is sped up 500 times, and this is how long it takes to take the dang thing off. Didn't seem like very long at 500 times. Thankfully, the other one went a lot quicker. Uh, for whatever reason, this elevator had very minimal binding. I think some of it is because I had a better idea of where to start, you know, how far to screw those things in. Uh, so that that was nice, at least. I, I think I had a tiny bit, but it was just, it's just to be expected. Uh, then it's about drilling the hole in for that center, uh, for the, the center piece. You see me drilling right here. And then once that's done, I, you know, I've already match drilled the other side and uh, 
actually will begin to have a fully working horizontal stabilizer. And so very exciting. I'm going to end this video with, uh, you know, showing you that I have both elevators hung on the horizontal stabilizer. Pretty, pretty cool. It's, it's absolutely starting to seem like parts of an airplane. And, uh, you know, I keep saying that. I know I've said that before, but it's one of those things that the you know the more often that this happens, just the cooler it gets. It's it's very exciting. It, it's it's inspirational, you know, to put pieces together and go, oh my god, I can actually recognize that as part of an airplane. That's so cool, and uh, sure enough, it is. Anyways, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching, and uh, more next time.